Hello everyone and welcome to Storytime. I'm Miss Morgan and this week for NEA Big Read, we're going to be reading Aurelie is a Dreamer, a true story by Aurelie Morales, illustrated by Luisa Urabie. At Abuela's house, Saturdays were filled with family and sunshine. Arlie was good at playing all escondite and even better at chasing chickens. She could outrun her big brother Alex and their primas. When evening came, she sat around a noisy table and ate mounds of tortillas and pollo con frijoles for supper, her favorite. But Sundays were different. On Sundays, Arlie and Alex sat in a stuffing living room waiting and waiting for the phone to ring. Ring! Ring! It's your mama and papa, said Abuela, from America. Hola mama, hola papa, said Arlie in a small voice. Hola mi niña, said mama. Did you get the toys we sent you? asked papa. Papa always asks about the toys. See, si, said Arlie. Gracias, mamá. Gracias, papá. Mamá and papá have been away so long, they felt like strangers. When are you coming home? she asked. She knew the answer. Oh, mija, we can't come back to Mexico, said mamá. We're trying to get you here to America with us. Your mamá and I dream of the day we will all be together, said papá. We will send for you soon, I promise. When Arlie hung up the phone, Alex tried to make her smile. Mama and Papa think about us all the time, he said. They're working hard, mija, Abuela said, for all of us. They want us to have a better life. But why will Alex go to America first and then me, Arlie asked. Abuela had told her the answer many times. Alex was born in America, so he can come and go. You were born here, so it's harder for you. How hard? Abuela didn't answer. Instead, she wrapped Arlie in her arms. Your mama and papa want you all to be together as a family. But they weren't all together as a family that year. Mama and papa didn't come back for Arlie's birthday or Dia de los Muertos or even Navidad. Then one night, Alex took out his suitcase. Where are you going? Arlie asked, but she already knew. You know where I'm going, Alex said. I'm going to Nueva York. He flashed her a big grin and gave her a drawing of the two of them in the yard with the chickens. So you won't forget me, he said. A few days later, he was gone. Now when she waited for calls from Mama and Papa, Arlie had to wait alone. That fall, Arlie started kindergarten at the school near her abuela's house. She was so proud to be at school, she learned to tie her shoes and write the letters of the alphabet. She played all escondite with her new friends. She barely thought of Nueva York at all. Until the day Abuela greeted her with tears in her eyes. Arli, mija, you're leaving us, she said. Your mama and papa are sending someone to take you to New York, to live with them at last. Abuela's voice was shaking. I don't want to go to New York, Arlie said. I want to stay here with you and my friends and my home. Please don't make me go, Abuela. If I could take care of you here, I would, my sweet. But I am old and there is no future for you in Mexico. You don't understand now, but someday you will. The next Saturday night's dinner was very sad. Arlie said goodbye to her cousins. She said goodbye to her friends. She said goodbye to the mountains and the chickens. I'll never forget you, she said. On Sunday morning, Abuela woke Arlie at dawn. They held each other very tightly. A man with kind eyes was waiting for Arlie in the doorway. This man is a friend of your mama and papa's and he will take you to America, Abuela said. Come, Arlie, he said. Arlie stayed where she was. The man was a stranger to her. Be brave, Arlie, Abuela said. Arlie gave Abuela one more fierce hug. I love you, mija. 
I love you, Abuela, said Aurelie. Then she left for her new country. Mama cried very hard when she saw Aurelie. Aurelie ran to her, but Mama didn't look like her picture at Abuela's house. Her hair was a different color, and it was curly. Papa had lines around his eyes. They held each other for a long time. Aurelie did not want to let go. Aurelie, Alex said, you made it. I can't wait to show you our house. Alex was a lot taller, but he still had a smile that spread ear to ear. Everything in New York was bigger and faster and noisier than in the mountains. It wasn't home at all. Arlie had to go to school, but the teachers did not know her name. She couldn't speak English, and when she tried, the words came out all wrong. She made friends with the other girls who could speak Spanish, but she couldn't stop kids from teasing her. Arlie's an illegal. They should take her back to Mexico. Arlie can't read. She's so backwards. Her mom cleans my house. She's our maid. Arlie was ashamed. She had never felt this way before. No te preoccupes, Arlie, her friend said. No puenden hacerte daño. She went home that night. Arlie asked her mother what the kids meant when they said she was illegal. Illegal means against the law, her mother began. I'm not against the law, Arlie said. Of course you're not, said her mother. But you were born in Mexico, so even though you are growing up here in America, you are not a citizen of this country. Do I get to be a citizen someday? asked Arlie. I hope so, Miha. I hope so. Her mother wouldn't say anything else, so Arlie asked Alex why she needed to be a citizen. If you're a citizen, you can do whatever Americans do, he said. What if I'm not? Arlie asked. She wasn't sure she wanted to hear the answer. Then I guess you could be taken back to Mexico, said Alex. He wouldn't look at her without us. Arlie didn't understand, but she knew she should stay quiet about her first home in Mexico. She did not want to be sent back to Mexico all by herself. She did not want to break the law just by being who she was. Arlie had to work extra hard to learn her lessons in a new language. It wasn't easy. By second grade, she could count by fives. In third grade, she learned about the Constitution. By fourth grade, she could write a book report and read it out loud. Pretty soon, it was hard for Arlie to remember how the sun shone on the mountains at Abuela's house. Now she spoke English like any other girl from America. She played jump rope games and watched TV shows. She and Alex could get anywhere in the city on the subway. They rode the F train all the way to Coney Island where she saw the ocean for the first time. Every 4th of July, she was mesmerized by the fireworks in the sky. She was a New Yorker. In fifth grade, Arlie's class went on a field trip they got on a boat and sailed into the Hudson River. Arlie's heart beat fast to see Ellis Island, where so many immigrants had come before her. On the tour of Ellis Island, Arlie learned a lot. More than 12 million immigrants passed through here on their way to America, said the tour guide. Almost every one of us has family that came to this country from a foreign land. On the boat ride back home, Arlie thought about the tour guide's words. She pictured the millions of other people who had made the long journey to America and how Lady Liberty welcomed them with her shining torch. She did not feel illegal. She felt like she was part of something very big. On Saturday, she called her abuela in Mexico. Are you working hard? Abuela asked. Very hard. Arlie said. She told Abuela all about Ellis Island. Those immigrants are part of America. Remember when you said I might have a brighter future here, Abuela? I think I understand now, and I think you were right. 
That night, Arlie looked out over the lights of New York City and dreamed of what she might do someday. She might be a writer and tell her story. She might be a teacher and help children who found themselves in this new land. I could do anything here, Arlie said to the city sky. Someday I will. The end. Thank you guys so much for joining me this week for story time. I hope you like this amazing book. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys again next week. Bye.